Are you are you waiting patiently for the Lord? Are you waiting patiently for the Lord? I think it's a real good topic today because everybody has a problem with patience, some form or another. Everybody has a little problem with that. Especially when you wait for God to answer your prayer. So, and I tend to uh, try to make sure people understand that patience comes with time. Mm -hmm. You can't, it's a lifetime, you never master it, but you can get, but you can do better by being patient. Mm -hmm. You have a whole lot of people who, who got road rage, who stand beside a microwave hollering every time, oh, I wish you to hurry up. No, it's a microwave. You warm up something in one minute. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Or they have a red light, they're going crazy because they are caught by the uh, caution light. So, and I, and I want people to understand, sometimes patience pays off. Because I've been many times when I've been late for work, and all of a sudden, I'm riding, if I was on time, it was an accident right there on my route going. So sometimes God try to slow you down, and you don't really know it. He try to make sure you escape that, that death that was in the in head of you on the street. And that's what most people understand. Just be patient with him. He, he got you. He got you. He got you. But we're going to turn to Lamentations. Lamentations, chapter 3. Verse 25. I know we don't hit that book very often. That's where right after Jeremiah. So we want to try to touch on this, y'all, because we really got to have patience with God. And most of all, you got to have patience with yourself. You got a lot of people out here saying, well, I want, I want a wife. Man, you just got out of the street, man. You want to know a good wife that stood in front of you. Or I want a husband. You just got out of the club. You want to know the husband if, you, if he's standing in front of you. So you got to make sure you understand how to be patient and most of all, finding a godly wife or a godly husband. Right. And most people sometimes don't understand that you got to prepare yourself first so you can help others and most of all, help yourself so you don't choose the wrong mate. Mm -hmm. This thing crazy out here. We got we to gotta investigate everything. <clears throat> Y'all see how this homosexual thing is going so... You understand that? Well, you got to have the birth tickets and all. You might be married a man or something. So, you got to make sure you understand what's going on. Ain't nobody gay bashing nobody at this time. Just making sure that you understand. Ask questions when you're dealing with a person. That's real. Ask questions. So, we're going to go on Lamentations chapter 3. We're going to start with verse 25. God is good. If you wait on Him, He'll put you in a perfect place. For you and you only. You only. That's awesome, bro. Perfect place. But we can't get ahead of it. Lamentation chapter 3, verse 25. Go ahead, brother, let me read. The Lord is good unto them that wait for him, to the soul that seeketh him. See, so he's good to you if you wait for him. The reason why I say wait for him, because he knows what's right for you. I don't know what's right for you. All that I got to do is just help you and give you what you tell me to give you. Most people don't understand what's right for them. Only God knows what's right for you. And you got to be patient. So I tell people all the time, if somebody give you something, ask them why. Because it's going to be some strange attacks. Say, hey, you give me this just to help me or you give me this so you can help yourself to me. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So you got to always ask questions. Especially y'all ladies, understand that. And me here too, but, but I, I'm a man, I can speak on that behalf. I understand. Tell my girls that all the time. Well, go ahead, brother. 26. It is good that a man should both hope and quickly wait for the salvation of the Lord. So we got to wait for the salvation of the Lord. Because you got a lot of false churches out here today. If you're not patient enough, you go to a church thinking that, oh man, they got a lot of members over there. Oh man, they got a lot of people. I mean, they're doing stuff for the kids. I mean, they have parties. I mean, they just getting it down. They turn up for what? No, them young folks say that stuff. But anyway, but they never investigate the foundation of the church. Mm -hmm. Do they keep the Sabbath? Do they honor the dietary law? 
Do they keep the holy days? Those are those. Are, that's the thing you should be asking a, a pastor or a minister. Hey man, what y'all do about God commandments, the royal law? Ask him. Like, bro, what you talking about, brother? We keep some of them. Oh, time to go. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yes, you got to give an answer. That's right. But we're dealing with patience. Let's turn to Psalms 37 and verse 1. And most of all, what makes people impatient? they envious of other people's things. And they see other people thriving. They see other people coming up. But they don't understand that the way they came up is going to be shortly, shortly taken away from them. You can't go off this, you know, what it look like. Oh, they look like they're having a ball. They look like they're doing this. They look like they're doing that. Man, we, we just sat in the church and reading the Bible. That's how most people think. This is the best information that you can have. It shows you how to handle yourself. It keeps you. Because without this Bible reading, everything that feels good to me, I'm going to do it. And we all know everything that feels good to you ain't always good for you. So we got to make sure of that. Investigate everything in this Bible before you take a chance on it because you can't end up hurting yourself. We still deal with patience. Sorry, verse 1. Go ahead, brother. Fret not thyself because of evil doers, neither be thy envious against the workers of iniquity. He said, don't be fretting because of evil doers and envious because they coming up. It looks like they doing well. We, had, we know as Israel or so-called African Americans in this world today, we at the bottom of the totem pole. Everybody else surpassing us and everything. But the thing is, we can't fret for that, we can't be impatient saying, man, when is it going to be my time to come up? No, you can make sure your time coming up is right in the eyes of God. It'll last. But if it ain't right, you want to offend God, and most of all, he might take you out. Go ahead. For they shall soon be cut down like the grass, and wither as the green herb. That's what the Lord said. These evil dwellers, they're going to be soon cut down like the grass. You know, you go out there and cut your grass, and you kill it. It's just that quick how it's going to happen. See, we got to understand the time frame of God. One day with God is like a thousand years to us. So we think that, man, it's been seven years. That's like 0.7 seconds to God. He ain't even, that ain't even on his scale. You see what I'm saying? You got to understand the mind frame of him. A thousand years, man, the God is like, I mean, it's a thousand years to us like one day then. So this is a short time. You think everybody coming up, but eternity don't have a time limit on Either you're going to spend it with him, or you're going to spend it in that lake of fire. Burn it. So you better get it right here. Go ahead. Trust in the Lord and do good. So shall thou dwell in the land, and verily thou shalt be fed. He said, trust in the Lord and do good. And that's what's wrong with our people today. We as Israel know the history of our people. We was in the land at one time. But when we start breaking the laws, that's how God sent them slave ships to come and get our people off the land of Israel. This is how we got to America. We can migrate over here. Everyone I asked us came over here on cargo slave ships in the bottom of a boat, stacked on top of each other with planks. This is how we got here. So don't let people fool you like, okay, we just decided to come to America. But he's talking about trusting the Lord to do good so that, so so shall thou dwell in the land, and verily thou shalt be fed. It's going to be one day we're going to dwell in our own land. If the ones that do right and appear in that first resurrection, you're going to become a God. I know it sounds strange to most people. But God said he created you in who in it. So God is a God, right? So that makes me a God too. I'm just a little G right now. Waiting on the big G. Yes, sir. Go ahead, brother. Verse 4. Delight thyself also in the Lord, yeah. and he shall give thee the desires of thy heart. See, sometimes we can have some prosperity over, the, over here right now. We can live good right now. But we got to delight, we got to delight ourselves in the Lord. How do we do that? We obey his law. Right. And he's going to set you up, believe me. A lot of years I struggled, my family struggled because I was doing it wrong. But once I started seeking him, 
He gave me a little anyway. He helped me. So I can provide for my family. And I know like us as black people in Israel, we're struggling right now. We got everything coming against us. So we got to make sure we have God as our fist, as the one who's protecting us. Yes. And the only way he's going to protect you is you follow this book. That's it. Go ahead, bro. Commit thy way unto the Lord. Trust also in him, and he shall bring it to pass. Yes, sir. We got to commit. Go ahead. And he shall bring forth thy righteousness as the light and thy judgment as the noonday. He's going to bring it forth so everybody can see it. And they're going to say, man, I don't know how Jeff came up, but he came up. They ain't see how I was struggling making $666 every month. And I had a $225 car note. I had a $225 house note. I ain't paid no light bill. I ain't bought no food. And that bill, we would be on that for how long? About six years, seven years straight? We were struggling. Yes. But I delighted myself in him. He showed me the way. I can feed somebody else beside my family now. You know what I'm saying? Go ahead. Go ahead, bro. Seven. Rest in the Lord and wait and wait patiently for him. Look at that word, patiently. I'm still on topic. Rest in the Lord and wait patiently. How do you rest in the Lord? You follow these commands, law. That's it, law. You follow it. That's the only way you can rest. He's not literally talking about you just, okay, I'm going to go to sleep. You know what I'm saying? He got, a, he got an outline that you have to follow. He got a roadmap. Rest in the Lord and wait patiently. That's the problem. When you see other people doing good, you think they're doing so well. Like, man, what man? Mm -hmm. Why can't I get it? Mm -hmm. Man, you just got out of jail. You're on probation. Man, you got to take time to get a job. What you talking about? <laughs> and they want it all night. You can't do that. The same amount of time you was out there hustling in them streets and you got in that trouble, it's going to take probably double the time to get your life straight. I'm saying that. Give me a second, bro. I'm sorry. Okay. Rest in the Lord and wait patiently for him. Yes, sir. Fret not thyself because of him who prospers in his way, mm -hmm. because of the man who bringeth wicked devices to pass. See, he tell you, oh, fret, don't get impatient because a man prospers in his wicked way. His time coming. That's right. His time coming. Believe me, like I said, Eternity is a long time. It don't have a clock on it. It don't. So you just rest and do what God says. We take some punches and bruises right now, but we patiently waiting on him. I want to be a God. Like I told y'all all the time, I'm trying to figure out God got them stars out there hanging. I don't see no strain. Mm -hmm. And most of all, I want to do it. Go ahead, bro. Cease from anger and forsake wrath. Mm -hmm. Fret not thyself in any wise to do evil. For evildoers shall be cut off, mm -hmm. but those that wait upon the Lord, they shall inherit the earth. That's what we're talking about, inheriting the earth, waiting. And this also, this future, really, we're talking about future. That's right. Because we're not inheriting the earth right now. It's not our time now. When Jesus set up on the throne in Jerusalem, he's going to call his folks to come with me, sit on the throne with me. And the ones that sit on the throne with him got to obey his law. And it's going to take time, patience, and effort out of all of us to go and study this. I tell people, you, took you 12 years to graduate from high school. Don't think you're going to get a couple of Sabbaths in here. Because I'm still studying, man. I don't need no 10%, 10, 20%. I'm still going. I don't know it all. Believe me, I'm studying. Don't sit up here and think Jeff knows it all. Jeff don't know it all. Go ahead, brother. Yeah, jump down to verse 16. Uh -huh. A little that a righteous man has is better than the riches of men and wicked. See, that's the wow. hardest part that most people can't realize. A little that a righteous man. If you got a little and you're not sinning, that's more than riches. Because you're preparing your way for eternal life with the Lord. But the ones that got them riches, all these Illuminati, Jay-Z, Beyonce, and Donald Trump and all these folks, they're basically going after the world, believe me. They're going to be cut down like the grass, just like we started this chapter. That's what their destination is if, if they don't change. Everybody got an opportunity, baby, they'll wake up. Go ahead, bro. For the arms of the wicked shall be broken, 
but the Lord appointeth the righteous. I didn't say that. The Lord said that, man. Go ahead. The Lord knoweth the days of the upright, and their inheritance shall be forever. How long is forever? Forever. Don't nobody have a time for that. That's your, that's your goal, that's your destination, to live with him forever. I can't even put it in my mind not dying. I'm living, I'm a billion years old. Who can, who can imagine that? Nobody. That's what, who we're dealing with. And most of all, these people in these Sunday churches take away the fear of the Lord and replace it with fun. And when come, come with fun, it distorts your mind. Instead of taking care of the business in the place you're supposed to take care of the business in, in is the church. Learning. Because you balance six days out a week. You come here on the Sabbath day to get recharged. So you can handle that other six days. This is what we're doing. Go ahead, bro. Yes, sir. That too. Verse 19. They shall not be ashamed in the evil time. And in the days of famine, they shall be satisfied. Yes, sir. We're going to be ashamed in the evil time because he's he going to protect us. Go ahead. But the wicked shall perish. But the wicked shall perish. All that time you thought they were having, that, that good time you thought they were doing, that they were just coming up all over you, driving a nice car, clothes and all that. He said, but the wicked going to perish. Go ahead, bro. And the enemies of the Lord shall be as the fat of land. They shall consume into smoke, shall they consume away. I'm going to give you a language term. It's like you putting that hamburger on the grill and that grease coming off that hamburger, hitting that cold. He's evaporating. Mm -hmm. But instead of evaporating up in the smoke, you're going to be evaporating for eternity if you're in that liquid fire. That's a long time. That's a long time. Wow. Let's go to Hebrews chapter 10 and verse 35. Don't lose confidence. And I tell you a lot of stuff you might learn. Don't try to go all in. Ask God for some patience. Take it little by little because I know one thing, when I first started this, this, this walk, I, can't, I went all in, I was choking for it. <laughs> I was choking the left and right. What I mean by choking? I was stubbing it out of there. I said, boy, you going to hell. <laughs> and you leave it, I didn't leave no room for repentance. I was a judge and execution. <laughs> so, and I had realized, I said, oh, I'm condemning people. And I'm thinking, I'm God right now. <laughs> so I said, boy, I can't use you in your power right now because you, you, you're too full. <laughs> so I had to break it down. I was like, man, I had to learn some patience with the thing. And find out I was as clean as I thought I was. Oh. <laughs> yes, sir. I remember I told my mom one time, well, if I die right now, I'm going straight to hell. Well, I went to Lake of Fire on a one green first class ticket to Lake of Fire. Because <laughs> <laughs> the stuff, I didn't even know all this stuff when I said this. Mm, amen, but we got to have confidence. Don't lose confidence in what this word is saying. Hebrews chapter 10. We're going to start at verse 35. When you get it, brother, go ahead. Cast not away, therefore, your confidence, which has great recompense of reward. See, that confidence we have is in this word. We can't see what it's telling us right now. Some of it, I ain't going to say all of it, the spiritual side of it. But we got to have confidence in it. And one man told me one time, he said, Jim, what all that stuff? What if all that stuff you read in the Bible ain't true, Jeff? You're going to miss up on all this fun. I said, you're right. But I said, what if it is true? All right. What you going to be? The only thing I'm going to be is in the ground dead. What you going to be? He shot up and sat down. This is what the thing. You got to have confidence. Go ahead, brother. For ye have need of patience. That was that word again. Patience. Uh-huh that after ye have done the will of God, ye might receive the promise. That's the promise. That's big. That's big when you've done the will of God. Mm -hmm. We're talking about even, even present time and future. We wait on him and his promises that he told you. He said you never seen the righteous forsaken of begging bread. He don't take care of you. He don't feed you. You know what I'm saying? But a lot of people want to eat the house the hall. As long as you got a blown sandwich, as long as it ain't poor. It's bread. 
You good, you fool. I'm fooling you fool. You might have ate some, some expensive meat, but I just have a long sound. Understand that. We wait for the big promise. When I tell you, well, I'm going to sit up there telling you what to do. That's what I'm waiting on. Go ahead. Verse 37. Uh huh. For yet a little while, and he that shall come will come and will not tarry. You talking about Jesus? He will come and will come. He coming. Like I told you, our years are different from Jesus' years. It's a thousand years. It's just like a day. We live in one day, like a thousand years. I mean, that's, that's, that's mind-boggling by itself. But we just got to wait and be patient. Go ahead. Now the just shall live by faith, but if any man draw back, my soul shall have no pleasure in him. So you tell him, boy, don't draw back from it. Once you hear it, like I said, once you hear it, don't draw back from it because he ain't got no pleasure in it. Really, he's going to take you to the lake of fire for real. Especially if you heard it and you understand it and you walk away from it. You ain't fit for the kingdom. I ain't fit for the kingdom. I ain't leave myself out. Because I got the greatest punishment of all y'all. Because I got to be judged for everything I tell y'all. Strictness. And that's what these preachers don't understand when they telling you this false doctrine inside these churches. They filling your head up with fun, fun, fun instead of filling your head up with law, law, law. And understanding the law. Go ahead, brother. But... We are not of them who draw back unto prediction, but of them that believe to the saving of the soul. I'm telling you, we are not like them. I'm trying to make sure I understand what's going on so I can save my soul. And if I can help somebody else, I help them. But first, I'm going to save Jeff's soul. That's it. I'm first me. Me. I'm selfish in that way. <laughs> now, I ain't going to hell for you. And I don't expect my wife and my kids to go to hell for me. You better do what you're going to do. If I get up here and start acting crazy and talking about different stuff than what these scriptures say, I better get out of here. That's why we're reading it together. I ain't going to sit up there and say, well, the Holy Ghost spoke to me. You know? He told me to tell y'all to put a hundred dollars on the table and you're going to be blessed. <laughs> this stuff works in some churches. I got a hundred dollar line, fifty dollar line, ten dollar line. I want no chain line now. <laughs> I want money that fold, not jingle. That's what they tell them. This is what they do. But God ain't gonna put too much on you that you cannot bear. Let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13. You finished with that? Yes. And that's what people, like I said, when you go into this thing, don't go into things like I did. I want this thing like what? You gonna hate it. No patience for nobody. So, like I said, the message is, are you waiting patiently for the Lord? We're waiting for Him. We're waiting for Him in our life as we are going through our everyday life today and we're waiting for Him in the resurrection. It's a two-fold message. 1 Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 13. He ain't gonna put too much on you. It's all about like working out. Sometimes you sit up there and you, you maxing out or you working out with, with heavy weights you never lifted before, and then you say, man, I ain't never lifted that before. I, I can't get that. But when you put it on the ball, and you got confidence in it, you push it up with no problem. And that's how the Lord is. He tried to make sure we step out there just a little bit out of our comfort zone. And stand on this word out of our comfort zone, especially in front of your mom, your daddy, your brother, your sister, and all these people that you respect. And that's the problem, folks. They respect people more than they respect this book. Because they say, Mama didn't do that like that. Man. You know, we've been doing it for years. Mama and them and daddy and them. No. It's what this book says. Mama and daddy and them ain't got no way to find to put you in. They going in there. Come if on. they ain't doing what they supposed to do. Amen. Amen. Well, he ain't gonna put too much on you that you can't bear. We just got to be patient with it. Verse 13. Go ahead, bro. There has no temptation taken you but such as is common to man. Uh -huh. But God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above that ye are able. You see what I'm saying? He said, I ain't gonna put so much on you you can't bear. He just trying to test y'all a little bit. 
See if how you want to be performed. Just like he did uh, um, Abraham and his son, Isaac. Took him up to the mountain. And Abraham said, Lord, you told me to build an altar so I can sacrifice a lamb to you. I don't see no lamb. He said, yeah, you got a lamb right there, your son. Put him on the altar. You're going to mm -hmm. kill him. Abraham didn't wait no time. He put him on there. Then he was about to draw back and cut him up right there. God said, oh, Abraham, hold on, hold on. We got a ram in the bush. So that's how this thing needs to be now. I'm telling you, these are our examples in the Bible. Now. These are our examples. So he ain't going to put too much on you that you can't bear. You might feel like there's a lot, but there ain't a lot. It's healthy. Patience. Go ahead. But, uh, finish in 13. Uh -huh. But will, with the temptation, also make a way to escape that you may be able to bear. See, that's the thing. He's going to make a way for you to escape that. You already know what you like and you dislike. Don't sit around and play with anything, male or female. You know what I'm saying? Somebody come by to you that you tempted to do something, you tempted to talk to them. Hey man, I'm going the other way. Simple as that. Everybody has temptation. Mm -hmm. So in order for you to get strong enough, he gonna those temptations are gonna be in front of you, right? They're gonna be there. They're gonna be there all day, every day. More so than that, because he's gonna come out of the house with nothing on him, baby. <laughs> Everybody, they don't wear, he wear too much of That's right. That's right. So we gotta understand what we're supposed to be doing. But anyway, let's keep moving. Let's go to Psalm chapter 40 and verse 1. Wait patiently on the Lord. He hears the righteous. But sometimes he's trying to take you through something so you can learn something from it. Mm -hmm. You don't, don't, don't think that, don't take this chastisement like, dang, Lord, let me get beat up that time. I thought he was going to rescue me. <laughs> no. He gave you one of the signs in the beginning. He told you not to walk over there talking to them boy. But you thought they were your friend. You went over there anyway. The next thing you know, they beat you up. Let's see if he'll learn this time. He get beat up or get locked up or, or something happened to him. We ain't going to kill him. We're just going to let him suffer a little bit. Just like God did Jacob, or just like God did Job, he didn't kill him, but he suffered with sores on his body, and his kids got, his son got killed, but he didn't kill him. So we understand, we're going to go through something. Psalms 40 and verse 1, go ahead. I waited patiently for the Lord, and he inclined unto me and heard my cry. Yes, sir. He brought me up also out of an horrible pit. Yes, sir. Out of a miry clay and set my feet up on a rock and established my goings. And you know that that's going to be the future when he brings us out this pit we in now, this captivity we in now. But also you can have little uh, pits he brought you out on. I'm pretty sure everybody got a little testimony how they were almost about to die, how they were almost about to get killed or hurt or something like that. It was the Lord that brought you out now. It's a purpose. I tell you all the time, it's not a, It's not like it's you uh, chose to be here. It's a reason for you being here. You were chosen to hear this. But it's going to be up to you to make sure you pursue this. Not, not just here, you got to do it too. Everybody. So we understand it. He said, wait patiently. You might go through a little something. You're going to get hurt up, beat up, whatnot, but you ain't dead. Coach used to ask me all the time, Jeff, you hurt? Or you, uh, he said, what, are you injured or are you hurt? I said, no, no man, I mean, my hand hurt. Yeah, he said, is it broke? I said, no, it ain't broke, I still can move it. Well, you still can play. Mm -hmm. It's different between being injured and you being hurt. You just got hit hard, got your bell ring. But if you break your leg, you can't play no more. That's, that's injured right there. You got to oh, sit this one out. Okay. See what I'm saying? Yes. That's how you take it through these little changes in life. As long as you got breath in your body, you just hurry up. When you become injured, and somebody takes you out, you can't play the game no more. Hmm. But go ahead, bro. Verse 3. And he has put a new song in my mouth, even praise unto our God. Yes, sir. Many shall see it and fear and shall trust in the Lord. Mm -hmm. 
Blessed is that man that maketh the Lord his trust, and respecteth not the pride, not such as turn aside to lie. You see what he said? He said, don't respect the pride. You got a lot of people out there that say, man, boy, she got a lot of confidence, or he got a lot of confidence. But they sinners. They respect people like that. Like, man, they show brawn, they show cussed out, show cuss him out. 